Hello and uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, this afternoon we're sticking with the whole Scandinavian uh, theme that I uh, obviously started last week and uh, I suppose you could say that this week's episode of the show is a bit of a, uh, a mere culpa episode. Um, well, what am I talking about? Well, for those of you that watch the show regularly, you'll probably remember that a few episodes ago uh, I did an episode of the show on uh, world whiskies and included uh, a whisky called Ishford, um, which I incorrectly stated came from Finland, which of course it doesn't, it comes from Denmark, uh, from the, uh, the Braunstein distillery in Denmark. Anyway, the UK distributors got in touch and said, well, we don't just do whisky, we do other things as well. And um, by the way, it's from Denmark. And I'm thinking, yes, I know. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, 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 the company kindly sent me uh, another sample of uh, the, uh, the, the, the whisky that I tasted uh, in that episode, but also uh, some of their other products as well. And uh, hence this week's episode of the show. So... Um, the distillery itself is uh, located in, um, oh, here we go again, <laughs> foreign names, uh, Korg in, in Denmark. It's a port, apparently, and uh, it was founded by two brothers, Klaus and uh, Michael, in, um, uh, I think it was 2005, I think, as a, as a, uh, as a, a a brewery basically a craft brewery and uh, they, they produce uh, a number of uh, um, beers, <laughs> saisons and uh, um, specialty brews and things like that. They also do single cask um, private bottlings and um, I believe they also have uh, their own range of, of single cask whiskies that they produce as well and um, they it wasn't until 2007 that they actually then set up distilling on the premises, so it hasn't been going for well, 10 years, um, which in, in whiskey terms is not a great length of time, but obviously now they've got to the, the point where they can start uh, obviously releasing, uh, they probably started at about three years old, I imagine, like a lot of distilleries. But basically what, so what they have is they have their own sort of brand, if you like, and distillery releases. And then they created this uh, concept, I suppose, uh, in marketing terminology called Ishford, the Arctic um, beverage, <laughs> for want of a better word. And um, this all seems to sort of hinge around the fact that all of the um, uh, spirits in that particular range are cut down eventually, uh, not just using bog standard water or um, tap water or what have you but no it's arctic water um interesting and you're probably wondering how the hell they managed to get arctic water well <laughs> this is talk about sort of you know there's a, a lot of distillers tend to sort of be very anal about their, their products and go to extreme lengths to uh, source materials and stuff like this but I mean this is going to sort of like the nth degree I mean so basically they harvest ice I believe they kind of have fishing boats with 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 and, and scoop up sort of large bits of um, of uh, arctic ice from the Ulisat ice fjord um, they then ship this ice to Greenland, apparently, where it's then melted, um, so pure Arctic water, and then shipped to the distillery where they basically use it to cut down uh, their, um, their spirit. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the marketing guff about, uh, about it is actually quite funny, but they claim that uh, uh, they're using uh, um, ice that's well over 180,000 years old so a lot of history in your glass so to speak but yeah okay well we're, we're, we're not great fans of marketing stuff but the, the concept is interesting like I said you know it's um, something that uh, nobody else is doing and uh, well I suppose you had to be a mad Scandinavian to come up with this one I mean good god you know I can't imagine anybody else doing it so uh, anyway there you have it. So, the, the, so we have uh, you know the premium spirits that are all all kind of uh, cut with um, uh, Icelandic uh, or Greenland or whatever you want to call it um, uh, ice. So, anyway, that's that's probably enough enough waffle about uh, about the distillery itself. And um, let's have a look at uh, today's line of venture.
Okay, so as I said, um, the, uh, the the distributors kindly got in touch and basically said, "Well, but we do we do other things as well, and uh, we're going to look at um, pretty much their their entire range, which is uh, quite fun to do." Uh, so we're going to kick off with the premium Arctic vodka. This is bottled at forty four percent. It's uh, produced from uh, a mash of blonde wheat and then is distilled five times. So um, I doesn't, couldn't find out anything about whether it's filtered or all that kind of stuff, which I would probably guess not. Uh, having tasted it, it does certainly have you know, spirit character, so um, I would imagine it's pretty much distilled and then cut with the, um, with the ice water, <laughs> or the melted ice water, down to 44%. So that's the, uh, the, the vodka. Then we're going to look at the, um, the the gin, and this is again bottled at forty four percent. I would imagine probably same base spirit. I I would guess, although I couldn't find any information out uh, to say e either way. Um, so I'm going to guess that again it was probably uh, blonde wheat uh, base spirit, and um, it, the botanicals they use are juniper, lemongrass. Uh, angelica root, which is obviously, as you all know, the fixer, uh, coriander, cardamom, lemon and orange peel, lavender flowers, interesting, uh, rose blade, whatever rose blade is, um, yes, sir, yes, I should have looked it up, but no, I didn't, um, ginger, licorice root, and sandalwood. Now, I like sandalwood, that's, uh, I always remember sandalwood candles when I was, uh, when I was, um, ooh, a lot younger than I am now, <laughs> and um, so yeah, th that's that's the uh, that's the gin. Uh, they're going to look at the good old Akavit. Um, all these uh, Scandinavian distilleries seem to uh, seem to like making uh, an Akavit, um, which this is quite interesting because this is a malted Akavit, so it's made from obviously a mash of malted barley, so essentially what would become whiskey, and then it's flavoured with brown sugar and honey, and bottled at thirty eight percent. So could be interesting. And then we're going to look at their two whiskies. We're going to look at uh, whiskey number one, uh, bottled at 42%. This has been aged uh, in ex Oloroso casks. And judging from the colour, I would guess they're probably not first fill Oloroso. I would imagine uh, refill Oloroso. And certainly from having tasted it previously, um, that would be my kind of guess. But we'll get on to that in due course. And then obviously we'll look at number whiskey number two, again, bottle of 42%. Uh, this is their lightly peated malt, which, uh, as those of you with long memories will remember, is aged in uh, ex-Bourbon casks and then finished in uh, Virgin American Oak. So, um, yeah, that's that's today's range. That's today's episode of the show. So uh, let's get on and uh, taste some vodka then. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what the next is, shall we? Like I said, it's got a nice wheaty spirit orientated nose, and as you well know, and I've said on many occasions, I like I like my white spirits to have some kind of you know indication of what the uh, the base spirit is. Uh, I don't want them to be sort of like filtered to, to hell and back, and just just smell like mm, a another alcohol. Um, there's a touch of vanilla, there's a, I mean this may well be by the fact that knowing what it is and what it's made from, there is a, a, Chris, a Christmas, there's a sort of, I hate to say it, a glacial freshness uh, to it and it's, it's really nicely balanced so you, on the one hand you've got this kind of wheaty dense um, spirit character but you've also got a, a, a fresh um, almost citric, like I said, sort of glacial kind of balancing factor. It's, um, there's a little bit of a herbal note as well. Not quite sure where that's coming from, but it's got a, a little bit of a, a herbalness. So I think, um, as far as vodkas go, I think this is actually, you know, quite a, uh, quite a pleasant nose. Let's see what the palate's like. A little bitterness on the finish, which is a bit unusual, but 
possibly down to the, the, the alcohol, but it's got a pleasant progression. It kind of starts off quite fresh and almost citric and then kind of moves into the sort of the wheaty sort of uh, spirit character. It's very soft, it's full, it's a little bit of a vanilla -y kind of note. Um, and like I say, comes back on with a little bit of bitterness on the finish, which I, I quite quite enjoy in actual fact. Like I said, it's got some character, it's got more character than, you know, um, some vodkas that I, I, I've tasted and like I said it's got a, a pleasant progression it's certainly it's certainly something I'd quite happily uh, quite happily drink um, as for stocking it I haven't opted to stock it but that's only because as you well know sales of vodka have kind of fallen well and truly off a cliff it's all gin these days but uh, um, yeah I think that's that's a, a really pleasant vodka. Right, okay, so let's move on to the gin. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this one, shall we? Again, there's a slight sort of wheatiness to it, a slight sort of spirit note, although sort of that's obviously not quite so noticeable. It's got a... Yeah, I can certainly get a touch of lavender, and I can certainly get some sweet juniper. There's definitely plenty of sweet orange. Orange does seem to sort of come through quite strongly um, on the nose. There's a little bit of spice sort of sitting in the background, a little bit of little bit of coriander, but it does seem to sort of be quite, like I said, quite orangey, um, which is not a bad thing. I quite I quite like this nose in actual fact. It's got got some nice complexity, like I said, kind of leading on from the vodka. You you get a little bit of the spirit character. There's also a sort of a, a slightly sort of fresher edge to it. Um, nicely balanced. There's a, there is a little bit, the, the spiciness does feel a little bit musky and I'm guessing that's probably the sandalwood because I, I remember sandalwood being quite quite a, a musky kind of, uh, of fragrance. Um, and uh, yeah, there's yeah, some some definite muskiness there coming through on the finish. I, I really like this. I think this is a lovely nose. Really quite impressive. Let's uh, see what the palate gives. Mm. Oh, that fresh finish. Really crisp, really <laughs> arctic. Um, plenty of, uh, of lemon, um, but it kind of kicks off quite nicely again with the orange. Um, it's got a nice sort of full kind of um, spirit character. There's a there's a little bit of juniper, touch of spice. Um, it progresses quite nicely in actual fact, and then freshens really quite quite um, intensely on the finish. Um, and, and leaves a sort of a little bit of a sort of a dusty kind of you know sandalwoody sort of coriandery kind of spice finish, um, and that's that's nice. I like that. I like that progression. Um, I think it's a really classy gin, and it's not OTT with with the juniper or the botanicals. It's all quite sort of soft and reserved. Um, it's a slight resiny kind of character. Um, not quite so. It's it's different to some of the other um, Scandinavian gins that I've tasted, and um, but I like it. I think that's that's uh, that's pretty good stuff. I think. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the Akavit. Uh, so uh, like we said uh, malted barley mash uh, flavored with uh, brown sugar and honey. So let's see what those gives us. Quite herbal, piney. There's some dark honey, um, some maltiness. There's a an almost kind of peppery spice note as well. Quite sweet, but again, it seems quite 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 balanced. It's not sort of cloyingly sweet, and and the, the herbal notes are starting to become a little bit mentholated now. I think this is interesting it's possibly um, I've never been a, a sort of a, a big sort of whiskey liqueur kind of 
sort of person um, and although this isn't a liqueur as, as such it's in that kind of style um, but yeah I think this is really nicely balanced again it's got some citrus notes yeah it's like fragrant Let's see what the gives Quite light, malty, herbally, subtly honeyed, subtly sweet. There's a, again, a slight, I get a pine note and a bit of pepper. Um, almost kind of caraway on the finish. I mean, I don't know whether there are other herbs and spices that are used. I mean, generally, um, in Akavit, there tends to be sort of other herbs and spices. So I, I would imagine there's got to be something else there, because otherwise, you know, where's that peppery note coming from? Um, and that sort of, like I said, almost kind of caraway kind of character. Oh, that caraway does seem to be a, a spice that's often used in Akavit, so I wouldn't be surprised if they have actually used a little bit of that. Um, it's a little bit sweet on the finish, it has to be said. That, that, although, that, like I said, it's not cloying. Certainly I can feel that the honey sort of, you know, on the lips and on the, 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 um, the edge of my tongue. But I think again that's that's quite quite pleasantly balanced, um, and you know if that's your kind of kind of thing, then certainly uh, it's uh, it's not too shabby as they say. Right. Okay. Let's move on to the whiskey number one. Uh, like I said, aged in uh, ex Oloroso casks. Quite oily, young. Um, I would certainly guess at no more, I would guess at probably somewhere between five and eight years old, possibly. Um, I wouldn't have thought it's older than, than eight years old, but it's got that lovely estery kind of character, you know, a bit like sort of Mac Meyer, a bit like Box. Um, it's certainly got some lovely barley, a touch of banana, apricot, apple. And like I said, that the Oloroso is very, very subtle. It just sits in the background. There's a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of wood spice. That is actually really very, very good. Um, I like this nose. Yes, it's got character. It's got a bit of sweetness, a bit of freshness. Um, again, full, malty. It's kind of got the, the gamut of flavours, or aromas, I should say. Um, and like I said, the, the Oloroso is certainly not kind of like overwhelming the, the estery character of the, uh, of the spirit. So that's nice. That's a lovely nose. Let's see what the palate gives us. light, elegant, a little bit more sherry character on the palate, a little bit more dried fruit, spices, a little less of the um, estery, uh, fruity character of the spirit, although that does come through right on the finish. Um, quite long, slightly oily, um, no bitterness it has to be said, uh, which is again quite surprising when you're dealing with Oloroso casks, I often tend to find that they will impart some bitterness. That's actually a lovely malt. That's full, that's long. Um, again, as you would expect with Scandinavian whiskies, uh, it isn't cheap, but I think the quality is absolutely spot on. It really is very, very good. Um, and I love the progression, I love the balance. Um, mm, that's impressive. Okay, so uh, let's move on to whiskey number two. Um, I think the thing that I like about uh, about the um, about both both of these whiskies and it is the fact that although they use all the Rosa sherry and they, they peated and American oak and all this kind of stuff, there is a, the character of the distillery coming through. And uh, um, I remember when when I tasted this one the first time round, you know, I was thinking, yeah, it's got some estuary fruit, it's got some character. It'd be nice to see what it is like without the peat. Um, and yeah, I, 
I'm very impressed. But anyway, let's, uh, let's see whether those goes on this. Pleasantly peated, um, quite medicinal, oily. It's got that sort of quite fresh character. Um, again, underneath there is a little bit of estuary fruit, but it feels slightly heavier on the peat than I remember the the, the, the other bottling that I tasted. And it's a more medicinal as well. I, I, I kind of, looking back on my notes from the, um, the previous bottling, it was more kind of sooty, dusty peat, and there is a little bit of soot there, um, but it seems more medicinal. I mean, I suppose you're always going to get this with, with peated barley, even if it comes from the same source, the peat, you know, uh, which I think the, um, the, the peated malt comes from Germany, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think I read that that's where the, uh, the peated malt comes from. Um, and um, so you're always going to get variations in your peat, depending upon, obviously, where the... Um, uh, where the uh, the the the, um, uh, the peak came from, but uh, like I said, so this is a little bit more medicinal. There's a touch of tar, but it has that lovely freshness, which kind of almost reminds me of old Colila, um, which had that lovely freshness. Again, whether it's kind of because of the connotations, it has a, a glacial kind of character. Um, there's a little bit of white fruit as well, slight floral note coming through now. Oh, that's, that is really complex. That is a lovely malt. I'm really, really in, impressed by this. So impressed I've started, or well, will stock it in due course when the, uh, the stock arrives. Let's see what the palette's like. There's more oak noticeable on the palate. Certainly I'm getting more vanilla, more sort of creaminess. Um, there's a, a tight sort of tannic uh, finish. The peat is softer, but again, slightly medicinal, slightly sooty, but slightly more towards the medicinal end of, end of the spectrum. Not quite so sort of estuary um, as I'm getting sort of more oak. But that has still got a lovely finish, a lovely fresh, glacial, crisp, um, medicinal, peaty finish. Mm. That is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really like that. Like I said, we have, we will be stocking it in due course, and I'm going to have to find some room somewhere for it. But I'll do my best. Okay, so that's it for some of today's episode of the show. Well, I think my uh, my my love in with Scandinavia is uh, knows no bounds, shall we say? Again, I think sort of you know um, a great range of spirits, and and, and I, I honestly believe that that sort of Scandinavia, um, you know, Sweden, Denmark, um, Norway, uh, Finland are producing some really interesting stuff. Uh, and I like the vodka, yeah, I thought the vodka was really good. Um, plenty of spirit character, kind of ticks all my, my, my boxes, shall we say, uh, as far as um, white spirits go. So, yeah, I think that was that was quite impressive. Really liked the gin, thought the gin was interesting, slightly different to some of the other Scandinavian gins, which is a good point. Um, plenty of orange, you know, again, a bit of uh, spirit character, nice complexity. Um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be a, a nice addition to, to our range. Um, the Akavit, yeah, well made. Uh, certainly, I think if that's your kind of cup of tea, it certainly had some um, plenty of character, richness, maltiness, um, and um, some honey, and like I said, some spicy notes, which I'm sure there's some spice in there somewhere, but I um, could well be wrong, but it certainly felt like it. And the two whiskies, I really liked them. I thought they were really very, very good. I like the Oloroso um, matured because it's not overly oloroso -y. It kind of, to a certain extent, sort of slightly reminds me of the, um, the, the Wolfburn Aurora. Um, and again, the spirit is aged in, in uh, ex Oloroso cast, but in actual fact, it comes across a lot more fruity. 
um, and 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 you know there's a little bit of sherry, but again it just kind of sits in the background and and yeah that's 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 my kind of Oloroso matured whiskey. It has to be said, I'm not. You know, I don't want just to taste all bloody Oloroso, you know, I want to taste some, some spirit character. And whiskey number two, the peated, well, you know, I liked it last time and I still like it now, so absolutely no change to that whatsoever. And uh, yeah, great progression, again, slightly different to the previous bottling, a little bit more medicinal peat rather than the sort of drier, sootier peat from the, the previous bottling, but yeah, either way, I think the quality is exceptionally good, so... Um, so yeah, big thank you to um, the UK distributors for you know the the samples for today's episode of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, on a slightly other note, I think I only need um, is it nine, ten uh, more subscribers to hit a thousand subscribers, which is which would be be nice. Um, so you know, um, thank you to everyone that's subscribed, everyone that watches the show, and um, yeah. All that's left to say is uh, good afternoon and um, good running. <laughs>